Since 1983, fame has helped business and education work for Maine. Contact the authority, the finance authority of Maine. You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. We are back with Libby Mitchell, Democratic candidate for governor. So we're going to jump right back in. You know, we were talking during the break about uh, jobs and keeping yes. people here oh, and yes. some of those things. So I just want to, you know, I'm not going to ask you about how you're going to create all the jobs, that kind of thing, but I want to just ask you, uh, can you define what, it, what is a good job? Well, a good it's job is one that pays a living wage. And there are several components to that because part of the problem for most people is health care. We have an opportunity to get the health care costs down, both for businesses and for the individuals. And I think you know in Maine a lot of our business owners are self-employed and they have been totally unable to afford health insurance. But as soon as the new administration starts, mm -hmm. we can create one of these, they're called exchanges in the federal legislation, but it's an opportunity, it's a purchasing pool. When we reform workers' compensation by creating MIMIC mm -hmm. and letting owners, business owners, have a, they saw direct connections between safety in the workplace and their ownership of that. The incentives got in the right place. Mm -hmm. So they started having safer workplaces, they started saving money, and their owners, their co it's a co-op, but we can do that with health care. So that's one of the things, that's okay. a barrier we have to get rid of, the okay. health care Well, cost. let's follow up on this. Yes. I mean, obviously, one of the things that we're talking about is uh, the MDF and Main Chamber survey that just yes. came out. Uh, you know, they ask businesses to rank what's the most negative impact on their business. Healthcare is number one in terms right. of the cost of affecting the business. Um, so I want to ask you, uh, one of the ways it's been proposed to reduce healthcare costs, it's kind of what you were talking about, was to allow more competition, to allow businesses to buy across state lines. Uh, according to Project Vote Smart, in May of 2009, you voted against LD290, a bill that would have permitted out-of-state health insurers to offer individual and group uh, health plans for sale in Maine if they meet certain requirements of state law. So would you like to know why? Tell me about that. Yeah, and, I would and, love to and, tell and you about that. Shouldn't Maine businesses be able to well, work in their own best interest? You know what? They can okay. now. You know, before, uh, it was a race to the bottom. Insurance companies could throw you off your insurance policy if you got sick, or they could deny you insurance if you mm -hmm. were sick. And so Maine had some consumer protections, and that was the issue there. But the federal reform says all states have to have those consumer protections. So it really doesn't matter. So this new purchasing pool that we're talking about, could we could partner with New Hampshire. We could partner with the rest of New England, make it a really big purchasing pool to help get the costs down. So that's something that you would be proposing? Absolutely, absolutely. And the sooner the better. We don't have to wait until 2014, which okay. is the deadline for doing it. So you would accelerate Day one. that piece? We need to start on that immediately. All right, OK. Uh, let's, let's ask a follow up on health care. Um, uh, one of your opponents, I think, would say, says that uh, Dirigo Health is, uh, is uh, Obama health care on steroids or something like that. Yeah. It's kind of requesting well, together. And you were a major, you were early supporter of, it of was the Obama created, administration. It was, it was created before I got there, but so, at the same time, yep, tell me I about cannot it. say. Is that a good program? Did it work? Well, it asked the. Uh, does it work? There, there were thousands, over, I think probably at one time about 15,000 people who finally, they're business people who are working people who did not qualify for state health assistance because mm -hmm. they were working. That's our goal, isn't it? To get everybody to work mm -hmm. with jobs that pay a living wage. Mm -hmm. So ask those people, did it work? And they will tell you that it did because they had nothing else. They would have been bankrupt, they would have had no insurance, and they might have given up a job just to get some health care coverage. Think about it. If you had a sick child and you had no coverage, what would you do? So it served them. But you know what? It has prepared us to immediately jump to the exchanges that I was just talking about. Would you have done anything differently with Deer Deergo? Uh, we tried to do things differently. We tried to create a pool of high risk mm -hmm. and because that was part of, we had to pay for it. Unfortunately, there's some bad news in government. If you want programs, you have to pay for them. Right. We tried to pay for it with a beverage tax, which was health related. Right. Because, and most people when asked about a six cents tax on the six pack would have said, yeah, that's okay for health care. But the message became fed up with taxes, and of mm -hmm. course the voters would have none of it. And so there was no way to pay for this high-risk pool or the new program, which was going to uh, ensure 30 and under who have less health risk than most of older people okay. in Maine. Good. I'm glad you brought up taxes, because that was my next yes, question. Yes, no. See, Alexa, we I this. knew I okay. couldn't be on a business show without that. Yeah, that's that. right. Okay, taxes. <laughs> uh, you supported the so-called uh, tax reform bill in yes, the last I legislature, did. and that was overturned in the, by the yes. citizens' referendum this past June. So I have two kind of tax-related questions. One. Several of your opponents obviously have pledged uh, to not increase taxes of any kind. Any kind, no way, no how. If you want somebody to do that, it's not them, they say. What's your position? And two, uh, 
uh, will you attempt tax reform again as governor? Well, let me start with those three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> One, I did support tax reform. As a matter of fact, if you read the, and I know you have, the Chamber of Commerce making Maine work, yeah. they also say that reducing our income tax is critical. I support that because we thought, I thought that it would help create jobs and because so many of our businesses are sole employers or subchapter S, they would have benefited. But by increasing sales tax? Well, they also recommend, and the chambers report, that you have to expand the tax base because we have a tax base that is very outdated. Here's the reason I would okay. not go back in that specific direction. The main voters said no. Okay. I can hear. They don't want that. But you can't reduce the tax without paying for it. Uh, many would say, well, just cut state spending. Yes. One could cut state spending, but not enough to pay for a tax reduction of that size without sacrificing schools, business incentives, and the other things that are part of making government work. Mm -hmm. However, will I, will I try to do, work on tax reform again? Absolutely. The problem is still there. Our income taxes are too high. You kick in to the top bracket at a much too low income. Right. And is sales tax a part of that formula? It could be, but it certainly would not be what was in the last package because Maine voters said no. Okay. Um, you mentioned education. We talked yes. about that and paying for it. This is, and that's going to bring us up to my next question. We have a video question that was submitted by one of our viewers, so we're going to take a minute and watch that, and I'm going to have you respond to that. So check this out. I'm Mitchell Tomashow. I'm the president of Unity College. We're trying to train a new generation of sustainability leadership. One of the things that's very interesting about Maine higher education is that we have many colleges and universities in the state that are all behind this orientation. I'm wondering what you would do to contribute to getting Mainers back to work, using sustainable solutions as a guide, green economics as an approach, and making sure that we train a workforce that's vital for 21st century needs, taking care of the concerns of both the economy and the environment. You know, I want to uh, I want to focus on yes, uh, the education part of that piece, yes. and really what they're talking about. And also, want to on your website, you say that uh, the government's role in economic development is to quote help people realize their ideas and potential. Providing quality education is government's most important economic development activity. How are you going to do that? Ah, I would love to talk about that. Yeah. I don't want to leave sustainability totally okay. because I want to educate sure. people as we all do for the jobs of the future. And yes. I think a lot of things are going to be locally grown. Entrepreneurs are going to be creating jobs. We're going to grow more of our own food. Uh, we talked earlier today, you and I uh, offset, mm -hmm. about the growing downtown movement mm -hmm. in mid-coast, mm -hmm. Damariscotta, the downtown storefronts coming back with local businesses, raising of the oysters, and so I think this sustainability issue is key. Okay. However, the kinds of education, there are 4,000 people waiting at the community college door right now for lack of capacity, mm -hmm. be and those are people who could go into jobs that exist now if we could find the uh, uh, vision to get there. And the money? And the money. But I, I do have an idea for okay. making sure that we can expand our educational opportunities. The state of Maine uh, has a liquor contract uh, and it, it put out this contract some years ago, I think at the beginning of this administration, eight years ago. And the contract is not up yet, but if we could renegotiate that because it was the first time the state ever had such a contract, mm -hmm. so perhaps the state could get more money out of that. Put it into a trust fund and use it for scholarships. With what I like the private public issue. The community colleges, as we speak, are on a big private fundraising yep. mission because they understand that businesses know they need their students. I'm, I'm gonna have yes. to, we're going to go after that, but we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more about that. So yes. we're going to go uh, keep you around for our afterthought segment. Of course. Uh, they'll be seen on the web and we're going to be talking about education and, and really yes. the university system, the community college yes. system, more on taxes, more on regulations, those kinds of things. So got a lot more to cover. So Thank you. I stick, look forward to great, it. Great. Stick right here. You can catch more of this discussion in our exclusive Afterthought segment seen only on the web. Just go to mainbiz.biz. We'll be right back. Maine Biz Sunday is made possible in part by funding provided by the Finance Authority of Maine.